It dawned upon me a couple of years ago that I had to record images of Singapore hawker culture that may be lost in time because this country is changing constantly. This became all too evident during the COVID-19 pandemic when lockdowns called Circuit Breaker was put in place amidst confusion. Many businesses had to fold, and this affected many heritage food vendors in Singapore's iconic hawker centers. In modern, urban Singapore the hawker center is a culture that has survived after 200 years. A photo of a Singapore street scene in the 1800s has the ability to transport an audience back to a time that is now no longer visible. This will be the case also for my work in 50 to 100 years time and beyond. This is priceless for future generations. Compared to video images, photographs can also be hung on a wall and contemplated on. I also want to start conversations among the audience on the topics I cover. I want to stimulate discussions on how this culture can and should be preserved. As a photographer, I hope that the emotive images which I produced can push my audience to start searching for them. It is an outlet that authorities can also tap into for valuable feedback on our food culture. Carefully selecting the images, packaging, and presenting them to the public can help generate constructive conversations. It will also help me understand what technique I employ is effective and appeals to my audience, hence allow me to grow and improve my photographic work. I want my work to have a meaningful impact, not only for those living in my time, but also for others in the future. In modern, urban Singapore the hawker center is a culture that has survived after 200 years. Truly little has changed in terms of how they function. I started documenting them for posterity because many vendors are getting on in age and in an era when they hardly have anyone who wants to take their places. Better occupations beckon their better educated children. COVID-19 was the trigger that pushed many of them into retirement. Hence, shooting the fleeting moments at hawker centers, from circuit breaker to the easing of people movement rules and reopening of businesses, was an opportunity to go deeper into my work on Singapore. I was advised to ease off from the COVID-19 theme, and this prompted me to rebrand the Hawker Center project as fighting for a birthright. This theme resonates with all Singaporeans and food vendors who want to preserve this heritage that they own. This project that I have embarked on appeals primarily to Singaporeans as it documents a history they are intimately connected to. My secondary audience is the world at large, visitors to Singapore, who have heard about our Hawker Center culture universally known as street food, through the Singapore Tourism Board's international promotions. This project, though, is still a work in progress as the pandemic is just one angle and there are more themes to explore. The life of hawkers, when they awake to prepare food while the country is still fast asleep, then toil away throughout the day to feed Singaporeans and until it is time to call a day is one such topic. I strive to continue to photograph the food derived from the four races in Singapore. The many ethnic food available, the select few who have decided to take over their parents' food stalls, and yet a younger, new generation serving non-traditional fare are other angles. So too, the people who benefit from them and take for granted hawker food is their birthright is another. These are topics that are worthy of covering with my camera. With regards to ethics, I always try to present the views in factual ways without the intention of causing unnecessary misunderstandings which might arise from any biased angles. I emphasized on the importance of not affecting and disturbing the hawkers and the customers during the photography shoot. Singapore has a strict Personal Data Protection Act which prevents photographers from harassing the subjects. Singaporeans are generally camera shy. Some do not like to be photographed, hence I respect their wish. My work should not raise any unusual copyright or legal issues. I have plans for the dissemination of my works. As founder of Asia Photographers Union, I have fostered deep friendship with photography organizations and photographers from all over the world. I have secured the venue sponsorship of two galleries, one in the Xiapu Gallery in Fujian Province, China, and the other in FIAP Gallery in Oradia, Romania. The prints shall be produced in the host country, and I am blessed to have the help of the photography clubs there to assist in the setting up of the exhibits. The production of the electronic book is in the pipeline. This electronic book shall talk about the hawker culture and should prove useful as archival material for posterity. I am researching on its production as an electronic book to be sold on the Kindle platform. 
The electronic book and the exhibitions are scheduled to be launched during the opening of the Online Asia Photo Festival on 10 October 2021. The Asia Photo Festival saw 52,000 unique visitors in the 2020 run. The portfolio and a recorded video feature on me will also be featured in the online gallery of Asia Photo Festival. The marketing of the events shall be done on Facebook, Instagram as well as emails sent to the 8,000 photographers in the distribution list of Asia Photographers Union. Asia Photo Festival and the exhibitions in China and Romania run for two weeks. Throughout the two weeks, testimonials shall be collected from the audience for feedback and improvement. In conclusion, the MA project is a unique final lapse of a very long-term effort. It has reshaped me as a photographer and a university lecturer in photography. In working for my MA program, I have come to realize the need to train my focus on key details that will improve my journey as a photographer. It is about understanding the reason for capturing images and who they are targeted at, and then packaging them so that they communicate effectively with my audience. Critically assessing what I do regularly is also essential. If I want my work to have a meaningful impact, not only for those living in my time, but also for others in the future, such as the late Henri Cartier-Bresson's work is doing, then these critical points must become second nature with me. Thanks for listening.